So behind the camera here, it's Catherine with Canterra, and I'm just in the field with uh, Justine from the Canola Council, and we're just uh, checking out some spots with verticillium and just comparing them to black legs. So uh, I'll let her take it from here. Yeah, so we're looking for verticillium. We're able to find some. The symptoms aren't super obvious yet. Uh, verticillium is a soil-borne disease. We figure it comes in probably in later flowering, uh, and it really likes dry conditions. So uh, this past month, we've had a pretty dry August, um, and that's probably why we're starting to see a bunch of stems starting to turn and, and showing the symptoms to it. What we're typically looking for is microsclerotia in the stem itself. Um, so it's something we see kind of later in the season when that pathogen is pushed up into the stem. So post harvest is actually the easiest time to find it, but we are slowly starting to figure it out. And actually, if we look at the plants on the ground here, um, so we've got some green, healthy looking stalks. Um, they're dealing with some other things going on, probably a little bit of black leg, but the, for the most part, they look nice. In comparison to these two plants here, um, so say half of the stalk is actually green, but then when we flip them over, we're getting this premature ripening and this dry kind of bleached sunken in. And that's a really kind of a tell to uh, sign of the verticillium. Uh, you will see something very similar in Fulerium where it's just half of the stalk, um, but the verticillium really gets this shrunken in and you can see how like dry and brittle it is. Some of these other plants that we pulled out of the ground, like they completely shred in your hands. They're so fragile. They snap. They're almost straw-like. Um, and that's what we're looking for with verticillium. Once you strip off that outer layer, and I've got a plant here, um, when you strip off that outer cell uh, stem layer, you find the microsclerotia below it. And we had a really tough time finding it here today in the field, but I imagine in another week or so, there's going to be a lot more um, starting to develop. But you can see this grayish hue here. That's I've picked off that outer cell layer below the, like, the stem epidermis, and that's where we're finding the microsclerotia. So that graying there, they're actually these tiny, tiny little specks, which are the microsclerotia. And that's how this disease continues on its life cycle. These will drop into the field. Um, they'll survive in the soil for upwards of over 10 years, and they're just waiting for another brassica plant to infect. Um, when we take the cross section with black leg, our black leg plant, this one's got a canker, but it's also got really predominant black spots. A plant that's infected with verticillium, you're going to just have this grayish hue across. You can kind of see this grayish speckling. There's not these predominant large black uh, spots like you see within black leg. Um, of course, in the, uh, this particular field, both of these plants are pulled out of there. So you're going to see a mix or a combination. So don't be alarmed when you're starting to see black leg, the predominant black spots with that grayish hue, because they're going to have both potentially both pathogens there and present. Um, but yeah, we are looking for that grayish hue. And like I said, er, later on in the fall is a better time to look for verticillium and look for those true tell signs of it, which are the microsclerotia in the stalks.